Welcome YouTube to Pawn Man. My name's Evan Kale and I own a gold and silver business. If you guys have never seen this show, this is a reality show about my job. It's an educational program. It's an entertaining program. It's my job to teach you how this business works, some cool tricks along the way. I'm gonna keep you guys entertained. I have no idea what's gonna walk through my door today. It could be anything from a lost treasure of history to an old gun. So strap in and prepare yourself because this is Pawn Man. I just got this 9-11 recovery coin and we've talked about 9-11 recovery coins before. In fact, I did a whole informative segment on it and I believe episode 12. Let's talk a little bit more about these coins. I love getting these in. I just bought this from a follower. It was a package deal. I bought a bunch of coins for $490. It was a great deal. Um, thank you, Adam. If you haven't seen the episode yet, what happened was in 9-11, there were a bunch of safes that were full of coins and they were dug out around November, December of 2001 in the rubble of the World Trade Centers. And all the coins were slabbed and certified by PCGS as being ground zero recovery coins. And they are very collectible. A normal one of these coins would go for about 40 bucks. I have an offer right now on the table for 150 for it. I might take it. I've seen these coins as high as four, five, six hundred dollars depending on the year. 2001, it's a good year just because it's the year of the attack. I should say a good year for collecting. But like the early dates of the Eagles, like 1986, 1987, those ones are gonna be worth a lot more. In fact, I do have a 1987. So this one is gonna be in the two to $300 range, and then this one's gonna be in the mid hundreds. This one I'm probably gonna keep in the shop for a while, just cause it's an older date, and then this one I'm gonna turn right away. But you'll notice with these coins, it says gem uncirculated, and it usually does not have a grade assigned to it. It simply just says it's an uncirculated coin, it's slab, it's got the American flag background, that's all you need to know about it. Why don't these coins have a grade? Why did they just stamp it uncirculated and leave it at that? And I did some research online and I couldn't find a good answer because there are some of these coins that are 9-11 recovery coins and they do have grades, they have been graded. Now my speculation, my thought, I don't know if this is right, but my thought is these coins, if you graded them, technically they would have environmental damage. See, if you send a coin in for grading and it has any kind of like moisture on it or some kind of a, a hazardous material on it, that's not good for the coin. I'm not talking about a bag touching a coin, leaving a natural tone. You know, I'm not talking about something like this where it's a naturally occurring process just from sitting in a treasury vault. I'm talking about a corrosive agent, something not good for the coin got into it. See, when these coins were buried in the rubble, the air was toxic and there was all that dust and all, just all that crap in the air. I mean, you've read about all the people that have died from after effects of the dust cloud, the cancer, all that, the horribleness of that. Well, that probably seeped into these safes. These safes weren't exactly airtight. The coins were protected from the heat, but I bet some of that corrosive air slipped into the safes. And as a result, all of these coins, if you sent them in, they may come back as being environmentally damaged. I don't know, I haven't. One, number one, I'm not a professional coin grader. Number two, I don't have the equipment to look at this and really look at it under a microscope and tell you. But that's just my speculation thought is that's why these are not certified with grades. They're simply certified as gem uncirculated would potentially be because of the environmental damage or the fact that it does cost PCGS money to have a greater look at this. I mean, there is a system for every coin that is graded. They charge kind of a lot of money for each coin. So they would have had to have eaten a labor cost, got potentially millions of dollars uh, or at least hundreds of thousands of dollars going through all the coins. Cause I mean, they're not abundant, but oh fuck. Yeah. A few moments later. Okay, where the fuck was I? So the labor cost of grading these coins probably is another reason why there's no, no official grade. In any event, I could not find a good answer why these all have not been graded. And I don't know what would happen if you sent them back in to be graded, to be assigned a specific grade. To my knowledge, them being graded doesn't really affect the value one way or another. It doesn't inflate it at all. But these 9-11 recovery coins, these are, I mean, I grew up in 9-11. Like 9-11 was a very impactful event on my life. I remember the world before 9-11 and after there's a pretty pretty stark difference. So when I see these coins, they bring back a lot of feelings about the attacks and just living through that and having that experience. Yeah, there's just a lot of emotion associated when I look at these coins and I do kind of a morbid way, I do like it. This one I'm keeping, this one I'm probably gonna sell like today. In fact, I almost guarantee you I have an offer on, on Instagram right now because I do sell these fast. Yeah, just like I thought, I sold this 9-11 coin in like 10 minutes of posting about it. Like I said, these things are really hot. Now, at one point in time, I think I mentioned this in another video, my dad held the largest collection of these coins in the world. But then my family went broke and we had to sell them all, unfortunately. Life's a bitch.
How's uh, how's 25 on these guys? What are they going for right now? They're melting at uh, 2169. Okay. I know that you need to make a little bit of money as well. Yeah, how's 27? 27, cool. We got some peace dollars. I have these bizarre like melts that. Oh yeah, it's like sterling? Yeah. Cool, yeah, we can figure these out too. Okay, so we got one. 5, 10, 15, 20, 24 piece dollars. This one might be fake. See, when you're, this one feels a little bit different from the rest of them, yeah. and they make them the same. Uh, the diameter is slightly smaller. Well, it's only one, it's just an ounce of silver, so it's not like it's gold or anything. Yeah, this one's fake. No silver at all? Uh-uh. Yeah, so what we do though, because I felt this one was a little suspect, put the needle down on here, mm -hmm. doesn't even register. If I do it right here, See that? Mm -hmm. Right here. Yeah, no good. I mean, I'm gonna test the other ones if you don't mind. Oh, by all means. Um, yeah, it's cool. I, I just picked that one out just by feeling it. I think the rest of them are good. They feel like they stack. Well, let's find out here. Okay, yeah, these are all good. Total of $1,866.64. I'll make it 1867. Cool. Point, man! <coughs> I, I hear it all day long now. Oh. <laughs> Give it up, free merch. Here you go. Thank you so much. Well, Here, man, do, you, card, do you need yeah. any of this stuff? No, I can dispose of it. You want me to dispose of that for you, too? No, no, this is my stuff. Okay. okay. I Thank appreciate you, man. Thank yeah, you. come on back and tell your friends. I'll see yeah. you guys again. Have a good one. Sweet. All right, so let's go over some of the stuff here that I bought, some of the silver. So I bought 17 American Eagles, all these peace dollars, this Barber Dime, these two collectible generic pieces. I've already got this Kraken one sold. I got 43 bucks on it, I bought it for 31. These pieces, I bet I'm gonna get probably 40, 50 an ounce on, somewhere in there. People love this hand poured stuff. Uh, I got some Canadian World Silver, and then I got some Junk Silver, which I already threw in buckets. I checked it for key dates. It was about ten dollars in face value. So, yeah, I'll probably make oh, three, four hundred bucks off of this deal. Maybe not bad. I, I really, really need it right now with my business. So it's great. I think he was in the here. I am. Um, oh, there is. Okay. I am so, you guys, I'm so sorry for keeping you all waiting. I just had people walk in, sell me a bunch of silver, like right as we were about to get started. So I had to do a bunch of constitutional silver. If anybody understands, I think it's a group of pawnbrokers. So Evan, thank you so much for being here, brother. Um, we'd love for you to just kind of chat, give us a little bit of the history. Tell us about a little bit of you, how you started it. Sure. Um, all the social media channels and then what you're doing uh, and how you're making sales on these social media channels. True thing. So we're going to spotlight, take it away, my friend. So the first thing that I'd like to point out to everyone is that there's a camera right here recording and I'm recording me talking to you all right now because that is content. Anything that is content, anything that is in the information space that is something you can make a video about, use it, do something with it. It's all ammunition. One thing I've noticed about this business, it's goddamn interesting and people love that. And you can use that to get eyes on your business and generate more sales. But there's gold in, pun intended, in this business with the information side of it. And I noticed and got into this because very few people are taking advantage of it. And it's something that you got to adapt or die. All of you, I'm sure, are a wealth of knowledge. I bet all of you know more than I do in this industry. Like there's an old adage where if you know 20% of an industry, you can make it, and the rest you can fake it. And not that I'm saying that I'm faking it, but you know, you guys definitely know more than I do, and you can just talk about facts and educate people. There, There is a bit of a song and dance side to it. Like, I'm just kind of a showman. I always have been. I, I like to be on camera. I like to entertain people. You have to be an actor. You have to be animated. Use your hands. Talk. Use a, use a loud, projecting voice and a persona. But by being confident and just speaking like that, you're able to engage with your audience. You're able to sell product. You're able to get more followers. More followers means more eyes. More eyes, more eyes mean more sales. You know something, Juliet? What? Smells in here. Smells like success. <laughs> oh my god. So you're gonna say something about the banana? Nope. Where is this going? Wanna see this neat trick I learned at Bible camp? I could put the whole thing all the way down my- <gasps> Oh, I'm not supposed to tell anyone about that. Oh the pastor my. told me not to. Never mind. 
Oh my god! All right, we are gonna do the educational part of this episode, mainly because I have this coin on hand right now and I probably won't have it for very long. So this right here is a Spanish eight real piece, the currency of the world, basically. These coins were introduced in the mid to late 14th century by King Pedro I of Castile because the Spanish empire had large holdings of silver all over the world. They basically, I mean, their empire was huge. They had a lot of land in South America and a lot of these territories that they held had vast amounts of silver. So they were able to mass produce silver coins. And because their empire was so big and they made so many of these coins, these coins flowed throughout the world and they were recognized as kind of a universal currency for a while. In fact, these were legal tender in the United States until 1856, that's how common these were. So these were minted in half, one, two, four, and eight real pieces, this right here being an eight real. It's a little over 27 grams, it's a convenient weight. It, can, it has a large, or it did have a large purchasing power back in the day, thus its popularity. It's about 89% silver, and you can see these marks here in it. These are what are known as chop marks, and although these can be fake, we'll talk about fakes in a minute, this is a good way to validate if it's real or it's a good starting point because what these are, a merchant or a banker or at some point in time in this coin's life, somebody wanted to validate it and they wanted to stamp it with their own mark to make sure that it was good, and that's what these are. These are marks by merchants, meaning that this coin was used as currency a long time ago. This one here is from 1793. So you can just imagine the life that this coin has had. So this coin, though, was so popular that the United States basically made a competing coin, the trade dollar. The trade dollar was slightly larger than it and it was meant to be used as currency overseas for trading and merchants because merchants basically, like I said, this was the coin of the world. This was the most common coin that they were using and the United States wanted to influence its power and its weight and its, its capabilities by showing the world, hey, we have silver coins too, ours are better. So they put out these trade dollars, but the trade dollars basically were a flop. They're one of my favorite coins, they're very rare also counterfeited quite a bit. I see them coming in, you know, I've seen them come in maybe two, three times. And, and every time that I've purchased them, I've way underpaid for them. People generally don't know what they are and they are expensive. A, a crappy one will go for 150 bucks. An uncirculated one can be thousands. Same story with this. I have this for sale right now at $300. I suspect I'll be able to sell it pretty quick. As you saw, I bought it yesterday for I think I paid 170. As you saw previously, I did a deal where I bought this coin and I paid, I wanna say 170 bucks for it. See, I was nervous about buying it, but I will show you guys how I tested it and what I did to validate that it's real and what you can do at home if you ever get a coin like this. So I've got my Sigma right here, so I'll turn it on and I have the one connected to it. Generally the one gets more into the metal. It's a better way to read. So we hit run, go down to silver, Go to 90% pre-1900, we hit run, we take the wand, we apply the wand, and we see it falls right in the middle there. So that tells me that it is 90% silver. It lines up with the silver content that it's advertised as being. The second thing that we're going to do is validate it online. So what we can do, it's very easy. You can do this with any coin. You simply go to NGC's website, you type in what it is, you'll get all these Things that'll come up about different coins. We have a Spanish eight real, so we click on that. Okay, I don't know what's going on over here, but uh, works on my computer, my laptop. Okay, so we go to the NGC, we type it in, and here we have the coin. It shows you a picture of the coin. You can get a good close look, make sure all the details match up to the coin that you have. So we can see all the details seem to match up. It looks about its age. I mean, this coin would be worth thousands of dollars. This would be a very nice example. You can read all the lettering. So we check out the weight. You can see the weight right here. They make weights on coins exact. So they make all coins basically the same. So 27.0674 grams. Place it on. So it would be 26.2 gram or 0.3 grams. And as you can see, there's a bit of wear on it. It's had a life, some silver has rubbed off. If it's within a gram, then it's probably real. This is 0.7 grams away from being exact, so that's believable that that much silver would have come off in its life, because, I mean, you can see the obverse is pretty heavily worn down. Another way that you can tell if it's real is you look at the edge, and I don't want to... No, oh, fuck it, I'll just rip it out. A coin like this is circulated. It doesn't matter if I touch it. I mean, I probably should wear gloves, but it, it like, I'm not touching the actual coin, it's fine. So another thing you can do is you look at the rim and you see, is the edge reeded or not? Like you look at a modern quarter. See, like if you look at a modern quarter, you see how the edges are reeded. That is something that they started doing in coins later, after the discontinuation of the Spanish Real. You can see this one does not have reeded edges. So that right there is the Spanish Real. 
and the informative segment about it. Just remember, if you are buying these, be careful, do the tests that I just showed you. If you don't have the means to do these tests, I'd be wary about buying these because I have seen other, I have seen other fakes on the market. Okay, you're good. Whoa, sitting in the office, yes I am, waiting for someone to come in. Sell me sterling, sell me gold, sell me a coin that's really old. I'm making great use of my time, as you can see. Well, just like that, it is the end of the episode. If you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that notification button so you know when new episodes of Pawn Man are coming out. Please become a Pawn Man Patreon. Every dime that I get is going to improving this show. Check out my books on Amazon. Follow me on social media at Evan Kale and at Pawn Man. And I will see you guys back here for another episode of Pawn Man. Later, guys.